Well, we didn't get to reflect this reference angle or this reference triangle over the x-axis, so we're going to do that right now. We're going to reflect the triangle. I'm going to choose it down here over the x-axis, and there it is. This is why we call it a reference angle. 360 minus 30, or 330, is a reference angle for this initial 30, or vice versa, this first 30 degree angle or triangle created at 30 degrees, or pi over 6 radians, is a reference angle for 330 because it's a reflection. It's congruent. Its height will be the same, and its base will be the same, or its long leg will be the same. Uh, that's also true here. So let's see if we reflect that again. Reflect this first 30 degree triangle, this first polygon over now the y axis. It's going to land over here in quadrant two. And let's try to put this same first triangle over here down in quadrant three. Uh, I think I will rotate it around this point. So let's go to the rotation tool. We're going to rotate the original polygon around this point. Uh, we want it to go 90 degrees. We want it to go 180 degrees. We don't care whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. It'll go to the same place either way. So we have these four triangles that have the very same measure. We have the original at 30. We have 180 degrees minus 30 at 150. We have 180 degrees plus 30 at 210. And we have 360 degrees minus 30. So that's the one on the positive side of the point one zero, the one on the positive side of the point negative one zero, and then one to the negative of each of these. So there's one in each quadrant for every angle. Simply by reflection or rotation, they're congruent. So at this point, go ahead and continue to mark the angles in quadrants three and four with their radian measure based on how many parts of sixths, thirds, quarters, or halves each of these represents. So we start at pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, or pi, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. So stop the video and go ahead and mark, uh, go to the caption in the basic tab and add the radian measure. And I'll meet you back here when your triangle is labeled. And we're going to finish marking these quarters of pi. So we had 3 quarters, 4 quarters, 5 pi over 4. Here's our 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, 8 pi over 4, or 4 pi. So I'll meet you back here when your quarters of pi are labeled. Now there's even more we can do. We can add the actual coordinate on the circumference at each of these points. And we can do that because of our understanding of the special right triangles, the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90. So let's 
take a look at this 45, 45, 90. Let's even make a polygon here. And I'm going to remind you that you know the measures of each of these sides based on this radius. I want the circle. I'm hoping it'll let me choose another one. Yes, triangle. Um, if we have a radius of 1, I need to know the exact length of either of the legs. I'm looking for the... color tool for this polygon. i feeling like a green coming on. Okay, so do we remember that the relationship between the two legs of an isosceles right triangle, or the 45-45-90, uh, are that we multiply one leg by a factor of the square root 2 to get to the radius or the circumference, which in this case serves as the radius of this circle, which has a value of 1. So to go backwards from the circumference to a leg, we divide by square root of 2. And then there's the arbitrary rule about not having a radical in the denominator. So we rationalize the denominator, and we have a distance here from the origin to this right angle vertex of a value that we label the square root 2 over 2. And that same distance from the vertex at the 90 up to the circumference of the circle is also square root 2 over 2. And you should be able to uh, take segment A sub 1 point Two, five. I take it back. 0.25 is the area of this green polygon. We are looking for segment A sub 1, which has a value of 0 0.71. Well, if you take out your trusted calculator and you take the square root of 2 and divide it by 2, do you get 71 hundredths? I sure hope so. And using that same logic, that same reasoning, those same calculations, you should be able to find yourself a height of this 30, 60, 90 triangle here that has a radius of 1. Well, this should be a value of 1 half. So let's throw a segment on there. And let's see if our value is 1 over 2. There it is right there. Segment S is 0 0.5. I love that. And then, do we remember that um, the square root of 3 is approximately 1 and 73 hundredths? So we'd be looking for half of that in this case along the longer leg. So oh, 35, 36, 37. Where's my segment tool? Well, here's segment S, uh, 87 hundredths. Let's see what happens when you plug your calculator in for square root 3 over 2. So, in exact values, we're now looking for coordinates. The x value and the y value, the x coordinate and the y coordinate, based on the distances of these known triangles. We're going to be able to give those values for the 30s, the 45s, the 60s, and uh, well, we know the coordinate of this one, don't we? This is the coordinate 0, 1. So that's the easiest one to label. Let's go ahead and do that. We're just going to go right to that property, and we're going to add at 0, comma 1, and that coordinate will appear here. Easy to do these. At 1, comma 0. At 
negative one zero Just a little worried I didn't get the first parenthesis in there. I didn't. There we go. And then how about 0, negative 1? This is a pretty good looking file so far. And we have it, 1, 0. So the question at hand is, are these going to be as easy to label? Well, let's find out. We're going to go to Properties. We'll go to Basic. At. Well, this is our 45. It's at square root 2 over 2, comma, square root 2 over 2. I don't know if that's going to be quite is easy to do. I don't see a square root tool here. So SQRT2 comma SQRT2. How's that? Does that work? That's square root 2 comma square root 2. Uh, close. It's square root 2 over 2, isn't it? So let's change that. This is at square root 2 divided by 2. Square root 2 divided by 2. Well, that's not ideal. But it's true that square root 2 divided by 2, comma, square root 2 divided by 2. Not great. But it is accurate. So a sensibility about what's happening on the unit circle in terms of the angles and arcs of multiples of 30 and multiples of 45 and what we know about their x-coordinate and their y-coordinate along the circle. Uh, we can go ahead and turn off the grid now, right? So I'm going to right click on the background, turn off the axes, turn off the grid, and we can continue to work on this unit circle until it is exactly what you want to be looking at. We can have radii, we can turn radii on and off, we can decorate the radii. Uh, we can even, oops, let's attach that. We can even play around with arcs here. And sectors. Let's see if that's an easy tool to use. Ah, that is kind of a cool tool to use. I don't know what color we want to see it. Maybe a little orange for today. So that is your unit circle file. You can use it as kind of a just a calculator. Take a look at what you know. I want to undo that orange and I can't seem to do it. Um, take a look at what you know and uh, analyze it. And you can draw a unit circle at any time to take a look at what you got and make calculations based on what you know about these triangles that live inside the unit circle.